If you believe that the only thing that you can lose gambling is money, then the story that I'm about to tell you could be shocking. I'm Rob, and I'm recovering from a gambling addiction. I made my last bet on November the 12th of 2022, so I've had a little bit of time clean. But I'm here to reflect on my experiences because all too often I hear that a gambling addiction doesn't matter because it's just about money, and you can always make more money. While money is the main fuel by which gambling addicts continue to stay in action, it's just not the only thing you lose when you're struggling with a gambling problem. I'm going to tell you about my six-year battle with a gambling addiction in hopes that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. And it all starts when I was 18 years old with daily fantasy sports. I grew up in a town where everyone loved the Eagles. We loved the Eagles, the Sixers, the Phillies. It's a suburb of the Philadelphia area. And since everyone cared so much about these teams, it was only logical that we all kept up with them, that we talked about them constantly, that we watched every game that we could possibly get in front of. And what happened to me was I developed this idea that the more I knew about sports, and I thought I knew a lot because I grew up watching them, the more money I could make by gambling on the results of games. Now, again, this started with daily fantasy sports. So for me, it started off with small amounts. But by the time I was 19, I was already placing bets on a sports book. I had used a bookie and I found ways to gamble online that operated in a legal gray area as I was going to college. I really believed that I was a good gambler, that I was a good sports better. And I continued to place bets every single day. And I was winning. Believe me, I thought I was way better than everyone else. My ego was huge. And suddenly, reality starts to catch up with you. If you've ever struggled with a gambling problem, then you're aware that the amounts slowly start to creep up. And the bets that you were placing in the beginning, they just don't hit the same as they do with the bets that you're placing in the present moment. They're much larger amounts, riskier bets, riskier games, and you're doing a higher volume of gambling. Now, the way that I was, I convinced myself that, hey, one big win will get me out of any kind of bad situation I end up in. And for a while, this was true. I would get myself down and I'd win my way back to even. Then I'd say, okay, now I can rebuild from square one. Then I'd be down in that same position again eventually, try to win my way out of it, and I'd lose. And so six times over the course of the six years that I was gambling, that I find myself sitting on enough debt that I could not feasibly see a way out of it by gambling more. And if you've ever gotten to that point of debt, it is dread inducing. It is depressing because you're now in a position where not only are you broke, but you can't gamble anymore. And if you're hooked to gambling the way that I was and am, not being able to gamble anymore is a much tougher hit than having to come up with some money. With that being said, there were six times where I had to work second jobs just to pay down that debt, eventually to get back to the even mark and start gambling again. I was living on a hamster wheel. I was constantly going through a situation where I would win, lose it back, lose more chasing to get back to where I previously was, and end up in that horrible position eventually. And I'm here to share my story because everything that I've touched on so far has been about money, right? So if I stopped the video here, You'd say, what was he talking about? This is all just money problems. But reading between the lines, what was happening over that six-year period? And why do I say it's more than just the money? Well, the very first thing that comes to mind is the time. I was spending between six to eight hours per day gambling for six years. If you map that out, that's two years of 24-hour days that I was gambling. The rest of the time... I was thinking about the results, thinking about where to find money to continue, or thinking about the next bet that I was going to place. I had no productive capacity during that time. All of my energy, my creativity, my drive, my ambition, and my time went into gambling. And when you do that, you let life pass right by you. One thing that I hear constantly now that I'm in recovery from other people who are also in recovery is that they are finally able to be present in the moment, and I could not agree more. When I was gambling, I could be out at a bar with my friends and not even be there, because mentally I was thinking about the bets that I had on, 
and I would go to the bathroom to check on them or even place more bets. It was a compulsion that I could not shake. No matter what I was doing, who I was with, or how good the situation might have been in the present moment, I was never there. So you lose time when you're addicted to gambling. Not just the time you're spending gambling, but pretty much all of your time. Another thing that you can lose, and is something that I lost, was relationships. When you're addicted to gambling, like I am, you don't really care about anything else except that next bet. You might tell yourself you care, and deep down, maybe you do. But you care about gambling just enough more that whatever it is, whatever else is out there for you, it's secondary. Whether that's family, friends, girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband. Sometimes even people have told me that they didn't value their kids as much as they valued placing that next bet. Because when you're addicted to gambling, your brain is hardwired to crave pleasure from gambling. And any other sources of pleasure, they're not optimal. You want to get that next hit of dopamine from the next bet. And the little hit of dopamine that you get by going on a date with your wife isn't the same. And it's sad because that is real. And what you feel from gambling is artificial. But we convince our brains that this artificial hit is what we need to survive. So when you're like that, you're not really a great partner, right? You're not a great friend. You're not a great son. You're not a great husband. Whatever it might be for you, if you're gambling, you're not really there. And when you're not really there, you don't care as much about the person you're with or the people you're with, they can feel that. And it leads to the deterioration of friendships and relationships as you're chasing after that next big win. One more thing that I want to harp on today is that gambling addiction can cost you your own mental health. When I started gambling, I loved it. I loved it. Every single bet was exciting. I was on the edge of my seat. I felt involved, engaged, meaningful experience for me. I was highly competitive. I loved everything about it. And of course, getting that big win meant everything. It meant that I had accomplished my goal. As time went on, it stopped feeling as thrilling. And it became anxiety-inducing. Because now, I was gambling in such a way where one loss could put me into debt. One loss could set me back for a week. It could be the choice of paying for groceries and surviving or placing that bet and hoping to be able to play more while still being able to cover those groceries. It was constant risk-taking. And when you're never finding yourself on stable ground, that's going to make you very anxious. You can also feel depressed because you've realized, hey, I just wasted all this time and money and I got nothing to show for it. I mean, the number of times that I would spend eight hours a day gambling and end up losing money and thinking, wow, I just wasted eight hours to lose my money. I can't imagine going back to that now in recovery, but when I was living in that moment, that was my reality and I accepted it as such. Either I was going to win and have a great day or I was going to lose and figure it out the next day. My entire happiness was dependent on something external to myself. That is what's happening when we develop an addiction. We are placing all of our faith in the action. We're placing it into gambling. And if we have a bad day gambling, that means for us that we have a bad day. Because we are the gambler. We have knocked everything else out around us. We've solely focused on this one source of pleasure. That is not sustainable. When your emotions are determined by an external source... You're just asking for bad days to pop up all the time. Now, I want you to know, it's not all doom and gloom, right? I am, I told you that I placed my last bet November the 12th of 2022. It's been quite a while, and every single day my life's gotten just a little bit easier to live. When you leave gambling behind, it's not going to be all rainbows and butterflies, okay? You're not going to magically shit rainbows or whatever, and the sky is going to pour down happiness, all right? But you give yourself the chance. When you are hooked to gambling, you have no chance of being happy because every single game and sports bet is designed for you to lose in the end. And if your happiness is based on winning, you're not going to be happy. Mine was. 
now in recovery, you know, maybe I will get a flat tire. Maybe I'll stub my toe. Last night I spilled an entire gallon of water. I had to clean it up. Wasn't happy about it, I'll tell you that. But these problems are things that everyone goes through. Not everyone out there is putting their life savings on a basketball game that they have no control over. If you're doing that, it's a clear sign of a problem. But once you leave those kinds of actions behind and you stop inflicting pain onto your own life, things actually become livable, tolerable. And in that tolerability, you can find some happiness. As your brain resets itself, as you stay away from gambling, you will find pleasure in the things that once brought you pleasure. And you'll start to realize that that life of chaos is not a life that you want to be living anymore. I've dedicated myself to making these videos in hopes that you can avoid going down the same path that I did. Smash that subscribe button if you want to live a happier and healthier life. And all of it is going to happen one day at a time.